Hi, my name is Greg, and I worked as a stand-in on the crew of the TV show Promised Land, which was on CBS in the late 1990s. Promised Land was a spin-off of Touched by an Angel, so the third season premiere of Touched by an Angel was actually the pilot episode of Promised Land, which kicked off the first season of Promised Land in the fall of 1996. I'm going to give you a running commentary of that pilot episode right now. That's a computer-generated dove, not a real dove. Okay, here we are supposedly uh, outside of Chicory Creek, Kentucky, which is a fictional town. But this road sign is actually just um, all a couple miles south of Springville, Utah. And Springville, Utah was the place that we used for Chicory Creek in this episode. Now, there were two versions of this pilot episode. The first one was shot by the Touched by an Angel crew at the conclusion of their second season in the spring of 1996. Well, that uh, episode was evaluated by the producers, by the network, by test audiences, and they decided to make a few changes. And so about two-thirds of the episode was reshot by a new crew in the summer in July of 1996. So this is part of the reshoot here. Um, you can kind of tell which part was reshot because uh, in the late spring, there's more snow on the mountaintops. And in the, uh, the middle of the summer, uh, you know, leaves are a little more green and fleshed out and uh, no snow on the mountaintops. Also, uh, not to get too personal on the, you know, the personal lives of the uh, actors, but Roma Downey had a baby in between the, the filming of the two versions of the pilot episode. So um, I believe this was done in the reshoot and uh, she's obviously not expecting a baby in these scenes here. You can see the snow-covered mountains there. That was the springtime. One of the changes that was made was uh, recast, uh, recasting a couple of the roles in the show. So Celeste Holm was cast as Hattie Green, uh, the grandmother of this group. And the original actress who played the part was Peg Phillips. She was well known for her role on a show called Northern Exposure. But she was not able to do the full series. Again, not, not to get too much into the personal lives of these actors, but I believe there were some health concerns. All right, there you could see in the wide shot, it looked like Russell Green, the character played by Gerald McCraney, was playing a harmonica. And this is one of those things that... Uh, Perhaps they wanted to explore throughout the course of the series, have this guy uh, play a harmonica now and then. But uh, after this episode, there's really no reference to the harmonica. But during this scene here, as uh, Gerald McCraney is talking to uh, Wendy Phillips, who plays his character's wife, you can see he makes a little gesture there. He's holding a harmonica. But again, that was something that after the pilot episode, they never really got into the idea that Russell Green played the harmonica. So let me talk a little bit about the cast members here. We have Gerald McCraney, well known for his work uh, previous to this on Simon and Simon, Major Dad. And here he is on uh, Untouched by an Angel, kicking off Promised Land. Wendy Phillips plays his wife. She had previously been in the first episode to air of Touched by an Angel a couple of years previous to this. Other cast members included uh, Austin O'Brien there. He was uh, about 15 years old when we, when we shot this. Previously, he'd been in The Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger and My Girl 2. And then playing the part of Dinah Green, the daughter of the family, was Sarah Schaub. And Sh Sarah was uh, from you know, locally here, Salt Lake City area. A great little actress that uh, we were fortunate to have her on the show as well. Okay, so we kick things off here. This is, again, in Springville, Utah. This is just uh, two or three blocks north of a uh, well-known landmark in Springville, the, the Springville Art Museum. But it's supposed to be Chicory Creek, Kentucky. And uh, a little bit more about, um, you know, Touched by an Angel barely had a, a, a renewal for a second season. The first season of Touched by an Angel had, uh, I think it was 13 episodes, so not a full season uh, by, by the standards of American TV. But they were renewed for a second season. They aired on Saturday nights at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, uh, 7 o'clock Central. And 
Touch by an Angel did very well in its second season, had a full season, and uh, was successful enough that they, they ordered a spin-off series, and that was Promised Land, created by Martha Williamson. Martha Williamson was not the creator of Touch by an Angel, but uh, after the series had been created, Martha Williamson was hired by CBS to kind of revamp it and take over. All right, so here we are with... Uh, with the, uh, this is actually supposed to be Doc Rogers' house, but it was really a funeral home there in Springville. Uh, all these places are, you know, just actual locations that happen to be just, uh, just right near each other. This funeral home, which they were dressing up to make it look like Doc Rogers' house, uh, you can see in the background when we look at. Uh, at Russell and Claire Green, the characters in the background, you can see Erasmus's house, which was a house that happened to be on the corner there. And then across the street from Erasmus's house is a church, which was a real Presbyterian church there that happened to be right there in Springville. Now, that real church did not have a real cemetery out on the side of it, uh, but for the purposes of this episode, they added gravestones and markers to make it look like there was a small cemetery there right on the grounds of the church. Uh, when they decided they were going to reshoot two-thirds of this episode, um, the, the wardrobe people made it clear that, okay, let's just uh, make sure we have everybody using the same wardrobe. And in fact, the uh, actress that was replaced, uh, you know, Peg Phillips, replaced with Celeste Holm, Let's make sure we use the same wardrobe that we used on Peg Phillips on Celeste Holm, and uh, that'll make things a lot easier. Okay, this was the other cast member, the major cast mem member that was recast, and this young boy you see here is uh, Eddie Carr. Now, um, the character he plays, Nathaniel Green, is kind of a troubled kid, um, you know, kind of undisciplined and a little bit mischievous and maybe just kind of a rotten kid when they first start out. So uh, there was some speculation that maybe the reason that uh, they recast the character is that test audiences didn't like the kid. Um, maybe it, it was because of the way the part was written and the actor who played the role previously was just really good at playing the way it was written. I don't know. All I know is I, 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 I didn't work on the first version of the pilot episode, so I never met... Uh, you know, any cast members on that pilot episode that didn't join us for the reshoot. So I don't even know who the actor was who played Nathaniel Green in the original version, but uh, we had Eddie, and we liked Eddie, and I think the character evolved quickly with uh, Eddie in that role, and the, the, the writers maybe, uh, you know, warmed him up a little bit, made him a more enjoyable character uh, pretty quickly in the process. All right, so... Um, there's Ossie Davis, you can see, and uh, of course a well-known, distinguished actor. And what I can tell you about working with Ossie Davis is that he was uh, every bit as kind and gentle and noble as you might imagine that he would be. Just a sweet, wonderful man and, uh, you know, very gracious to talk to. Um, just just really sweet. It was, it was a treat to work with him. He's since passed away, but at the time, of course, uh, was looking well, and uh, we just had a, we just had a uh, we just had a really good time working with him. It just it just added that sense of class to what we were doing. And of course, Celeste Holm, uh, she plays a very down to earth grandmother character here. But this is, a, you know, Hollywood royalty uh, that that joined us for the show. Celeste, uh, you know successful uh, live live theater actress, successful, you know, Hollywood actress from the studio days, Academy Award winning. Um, just just a, a real treat to work with her. And she could she could tell you stories about uh, the old days in Hollywood and, and, you know, really be the movie star. And but she was also just as down to earth off camera as as you could imagine. Just a wonderful wonderful person to work with. And of course, she has since passed away. So I'm recording this commentary in December of 2014. So it's about 18 years since we've, we have we were doing uh, this stuff, actually, uh, you know, film, filming these actual scenes here. Again, this is Springville, Utah, which is about an hour's drive south of Salt Lake City.
I think that when they originally chose this location to shoot the pilot episode, they may not have been thinking about the fact that we did return to this location uh, several times over the next couple of years. Uh, we kept, kept going back to visit Erasmus, uh, the character played by Ossie Davis. And so it became a little bit of a problem to... <laughs> They have to travel all the way down to Springville every now and then to shoot more episodes in our fictional Chicory Creek town. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it was all right. Um, I should mention also one of our uh, assistant directors who was working on the series here for the first couple of seasons was a young man named Anthony Hemingway. Anthony, he wasn't even 21 years old when he started working with us, and he just was one of these folks that had... he. He had the movie business in his DNA, and uh, he just he just loved every bit of it. And again, very young but very competent. He was the the, the second assistant director, uh, so he worked on every episode of the series for a while. Um, and eventually, he you know he kind of moved on and got some other opportunities. And today, he's, uh, he's a director, not an assistant director, a director on many TV series. So he's worked on uh, shows like, um, I don't know, Battlestar Galactica, some shows for HBO. Just, uh, uh, the Wire is one he's, he's done a lot of. So just, you know, the list goes on and on. All right, this is obviously scenes that were reshot because anytime you see uh, the characters of Hattie and Nathaniel in... In any of these scenes, that would indicate that those are scenes that had had, been, had to be reshot. I think originally they decided that the character Hattie Green, the you know played by Celeste Holm, was going to wear lots of hats. And at the beginning, that happened, but as the uh, series went on, they just kind of moved away from that idea. Her name was Hattie, but she didn't necessarily always have a hat on. Now, because this show was, this episode was originally shot in the springtime, they established things like characters wearing jackets and sweaters and uh, otherwise dressing as they would when the weather's a little bit chilly. Now, when we're reshooting this, it's, it's July. It's, uh, it's like the second week of July. And so, but they still had to wear the jackets and the sweaters and things that they had established in the original uh, version of the episode. So anyway, they, they got through that all right. Now, even though the crew from Touched by an Angel shot the original version of this pilot episode, um, the, they, they were still making Touched by an Angel when Promised Land went into full production. So, uh, an entirely separate crew was hired to do the Promised Land show. So, suddenly we had two, two CBS series, drama series, uh, shooting in and around the Salt Lake City area. And so, that, I mean, that was good for the industry locally in Utah to have two full crews working on the show. And, uh, yeah, occasionally we did some crossover episodes. Hey, there's something that uh, will be referenced in a, in a later episode. You see Hattie Green there searching through her purse. And um, they never really explain in this episode what she's looking for. But in a future episode, they will follow up on that. Some of the other ideas they wanted to explore with these characters, for example, uh, Josh Green was playing the guitar. And so they wanted to establish that he was really, really interested in music. And so, you know, he wanted to go to Nashville. He wanted to be a musician. And so they'll explore that in bits and pieces uh, as, we, as we move forward. It is interesting, however, to note that some of these earlier episodes, some of the things that were emphasized about the characters may or may not have blossomed uh, later on, may have just been ignored later on. But that's the evolution of a TV series. I was fortunate to work on the entire series uh, promised Land from, well, f starting on the reshoot of this pilot episode and going all the way to when the series was eventually finished. And uh, so it was, it, it, was, it was interesting to see kind of the ups and downs and how, how a show evolves over the course of three seasons. 
sometimes disappointing, but in the end, just a great education for me. And of course, you know, I, I always enjoyed working with the people, uh, the, the actors and uh, especially the behind the scenes crew, which is, you know, over a hundred people uh, behind the scenes working on these shows. So um, just a, a joy to work with those people. And I've, and I've known them and worked on and off with them for, for many years since. Just the finest folks. A little something else, to, uh, maybe some trivia about Touch by an Angel. Maybe some people already know this, but uh, Touch by an Angel was created by a fellow by the name of John Messias. I, I never, I'm never quite sure if I'm pronouncing his his name correctly. Messias, Messias. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, the original version that he created of Touch by an Angel just wasn't quite working as far as the network was concerned. So they hired Martha Williamson to come in and revamp the show and, you know, kind of uh, figure out a, a, a way to make it work. Um, and, it will, and it apparently worked. So, <laughs> but as far as the other fellow who actually created Touch by an Angel, he got his name at the closing credits every single time so i hope he was uh you know felt that he was fairly compensated for his contribution and he went on to do other things like there was a show called joan of arcadia also on cbs that was created by by the same individual um so anyway good for him but martha williamson was the creator of promised land and um the the original title of the Promised Land series was Home of the Brave. That was one of the things that was changed in the process of working through the pilot and, and you know, deciding what the final version would be. So at first it was going to be called Home of the Brave. It became Promised Land. Uh, this scene here that you're watching is uh, obviously shot at night, and it is on location a night exterior scene. Now, for those of you not familiar with uh, movie production, when you have to do a night exterior scene, uh, pretty much always have to wait until it's dark, until the sky is dark. So I believe this scene was part of the original shoot in the spring of 1996, when sundown would have been closer to, you know, 7 o'clock at night, maybe 7.38. Um, so, so the sky would be dark enough that you could shoot a night exterior scene starting maybe 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. And that's important because a scene like this could take a couple of hours to shoot. Now, uh, if you were to do this in July, the sky above wouldn't have been dark enough until maybe 11 o'clock at night. And then you'd be shooting until after midnight to get a scene like that completed. <laughs> 